Once you get past a single camera setup, the travel router is one of the best investments a live streamer can make for their mobile live streaming setup. And today we're going to walk through GL iNet's Slate 7. So many folks have used the Slate AXT1800 travel router. That is going to be the previous generation's router for, uh, for mobile live streaming for many, many folks. Now, some folks use the Opal and some use the Barrel, but the Slate, uh, the Slate AXT1800 offered us the extra, um, the extra U uh, Ethernet port in, in its configuration. And so <clears throat> I have one here that I use for mobile live streaming. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little, there we go. Yeah. So it's got the extra USB. Can I see, can I get that over front? Yeah, there we go. It's got the extra ethernet jack here on the back and it's a, it's a Wi-Fi 6 travel router. Very good, does a great job. It changed a lot of folks live streaming because of the way that it operates. But what I wanted to show you today is the next version, the Slate 7 Wi-Fi 7 travel router. I'm doing this as though for the first time for a couple of reasons. One of which I can't, from, I can't remember from one time to the next how I did it. And without going back and looking at a resource, sometimes I get a little bit intimidated. And, and when I feel that angst, I know I'm feeling what so many mobile live streamers are feeling when they get new equipment or they're faced with setting up something for the first time and they've never done it before. They're not sure they're going to mess it up. I don't want to brick this little device. It's almost impossible to brick, by the way. And a lot of the times when I do a consultation call, it's because someone just hasn't gone through the steps before. And most folks are shared experience people. They want someone else to walk through the steps with them. And so here I am doing that for you. Now they did go back to the two uh, ethernet jack on the back here, but I do want to let you know that it offers two and a half gigabits per second for either of those. And I can configure either of those to be uh, LAN or WAN. So I can have two local area network uh, ports here if I want and run my Ethernet through USB-C, uh, USB-A, or uh, I can run both of them as a wide area network and run two connections into this one router. Uh, it's built on do Open WRT, and so you can uh, you you can have this set up to be a bonding router if you want to. We're not getting into any of that today. Today's goal is just to set it up as though for the first time, first rattle out of the box, and so. I'm going to reset this router to factory settings just like it was out of the box and then we're going to walk through the process as though we've never touched this router before, cranking it up for the first time, plugging it in, seeing what kind of power it requires, getting Ethernet run into it as though we're putting a, put a, a MIFI hotspot into it to provide Ethernet. Uh, we can do the same thing tethering with our, with our cell phone and running into the USB-A port or, or as though I were running my Starlink Mini into this device to let it handle all of the data that's running across the infield of a baseball stream or, or trying to stretch the distance I can set my cameras up on the football field on the sideline come this fall. And, and run my football live stream so I can have my cameras on the 25, the 50, and the 25 and be able to reach all three of them with this travel router as it does extend our range. I did a video on that one not too long ago. That was actually the first video I did for the Slate 7. Took it outside and ran it 400 feet, line of sight, single router, and managed to maintain good quality data transmission at that distance with a, with a camera set up and, and, and able to talk to the camera and you can see that video here. So plugging in the Slate 7 travel router, I am showing that it's a, a, as it is started up, we're fully running there. You can tell by the, uh, the front of the device, I'm pulling 2.4 watts. I've seen it as high as 3. Point, there's 3.6. That's 7.2, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to draw what it needs. Uh, this device will give it 20, I think, watts per channel. Let's see, output on, excuse me, 30 watts if it, wants, if it, if it were to draw so much. Uh, it's a 5 volt, 3 amp, so 15 watt on 5 volt. It'll do a 9 volt. It will also do a 9 volt 3 amps, that's 27 watts if you run it on a 9 volt. It'll run a 12 volt as well, and at 12 volts it's going to pull 2.5 amps, so that's 20. 
for that's 30 amps it can uh, 30 watts it can pull if it were running on a 12 volt power supply so you have some flexibility with the slate 7 that we didn't have with the previous versions because it will run on 9 volt and 12 volt uh, sources here i also would like to point out the uh, the the display is a touch screen and so i can i can choose each of these as we go through i can then also swipe on it now it has uh, it, it has the combined uh, five gigahertz two and a half gigahertz network available to it that's a wi-fi 7 feature i don't have anything that will make use of that just yet but the the mlo i have it turned off you turn those on and off on the screen you can see the five gigs is turned on the 2.4 gig is turned on as well also has open VPN built in, WireGuard built in, Ad Home, excuse me, AdGuard built in, and the Tor network built in. Uh, it's going to give us up and download uh, data handling here on this screen. Uh, it's going to give us CPU load and all the such time, and then back to our separate choices for how we're going to set this up. So let me see if I can get it to reset. And I do believe I remember how to do that. Um, running 4K NDI on this little camera is a little glitchy, but it's going to give us the shots that I, that I think we need. So I'm going to hold down the side button, keep pressing to repair mode, keep pressing to reset mode, and then keep pressing uh, release to reset mode. So we're going to reset it to factory settings. And that was just holding down the, uh, the button on the side, not the slide switch, but the button that's on the side. It is resetting. We'll let that run. I want to make sure that I am covering the why of a travel router. We're going to let this handle the data that the cameras are going to send back and forth across the network. And it allows us to extend how far we can put our cameras away from each other and the control device. This is the, the answer to stretching the field, so to speak. How much? How much on this particular device? We're talking about $169 right now on Amazon. And as of today, there is a $20 coupon on Amazon. I pre-ordered both of mine from their website back before they came out. Got a pretty good deal on pre-ordering them. Uh, and, and I do have two. I'll, the next video we'll do is setting up the, route, the repeater with the second router, and we're actually going to do that one live. That's probably going to be a live stream so that I can't edit out my mistakes because I want you to see just how easy it is to set up a repeating router with the Slate 7 because that should not be intimidating at all when we go to set up the repeating router. So I just want to make sure that we cover that and we'll do it live for the next uh, Slate 7 router. Okay, so the how part of this is where we're finally getting to as this, uh, as this status bar is finally getting to that point where it's showing us that it's almost started up. This is gonna be startup from the first time. On the back of the device, it's gonna give us the information that we need. It's gonna give us our IP address, which is our, our, our home IP address with which we would we'll log into the web interface. It's also, it's also going to give us the SSID name and the SSID password. The key is what it's listed as here. And so that's going to give us the ability to get in. So now it's going to ask me, do I want to connect via Wi-Fi or connect via LAN? And to this device, I want to connect via Wi-Fi. It wants me to scan the QR code to connect to this device. And so let's see, I'll just go over here to my phone. In order to, to connect to the router via Wi-Fi, we will need to scan the code with one of our devices. So I'll break my phone out. We will scan that code. Maybe, yeah. Do I want to join this network? Yes, I do. And that's gonna bring up its desire to set a new password. I can't go any further with setting up the device until I create a new admin password for the web UI. And so I am, I am as far as I can go on the device itself. And now I'm moving into the web UI. And the only thing I have to do here in order to get it up and running is let it choose a, uh, let it choose a password for me. And now I have the, uh, the password set up and I have access to the device itself. And it's going to give me a little tutorial here. I can skip if I want to. Uh, show me where the different system settings are. Um, 
collapsing those settings, swiping left and right to get through the different areas. And so I am connected via Ethernet to the device itself, but I'm connected uh, to, to the, to the inter internet itself. I'm connected to the ether via Wi-Fi with my devices, my cameras. Uh, my cameras will be set up uh, in such a way that I will almost always connect my cameras via Wi-Fi. Um, I will we'll sometimes connect my control device via Ethernet to the router itself because it's close enough that I can do so. But all my cameras as they are spread around the field will be connected via Wi-Fi. And so the Slate 7 Wi-Fi 7 travel router is going to be an excellent choice for a lot of mobile live streamers. Do you use a travel router in your mobile live stream setup. Let me know in the comments. Let me know if this is one of the upgrades you're going to make for your next streaming season. And I hope devices like this and videos like this give you the confidence to just press go live when it comes to your mobile live stream.